Hi, everyone. I have today with me Angela Uchi. That is how you pronounce your last name. You got right? it. Yeah, yeah. I'm very impressed. Me and Angela, uh, we just became acquainted because uh, she was uh, recently on Cultish and I heard her testimony and I thought it would be a great idea to have her come on to my channel and here uh, to tell her story to you guys so you can hear. Angela, thank you for coming on my channel today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so um, most of my audience probably has no idea who you are. Uh, you are an ex-New Ager, and I found your story so intriguing and kind of it hooked me in, honestly, when I heard about it, and because it's really, really unique. First, let's just jump right into it. Uh, you used to be an ex-New Ager, but why don't you start a little bit with your background, where you grew up, who you are, uh, a little bit about that. Perfect. So... I grew up as, this is a really integral part of my story. I grew up as an only child, um, single mom. Mm. So right off the bat, I had a little bit of a rocky foundation, never knew my dad. Mm. Um, however, I did have grandparents that lived right up the street from us. And my grandma really helped my mom out. My mom was a teacher. She still is. Mm. But, you know, those early mornings, uh, it was always grandma there to get me up for school and then in the afternoon, grandma was there to pick me up or I could just walk down the street from my school to her house. In fact, in middle school, that became my my heaven on earth was after school time, walk down the street, sit with grandma for two hours, eat Cheetos, drink Mountain Dew and watch Ellen. Now, obviously, I know Ellen's very corrupt, but at the time I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> so she was just my best friend mm. ever. Um, I was raised under a loose guise of Catholicism because my grandparents were Catholic. Mm. Um, I have really asked my mom many times since my grandmom's passing, you know, I really wanted to make sure because I know not all Catholics are necessarily dedicated to Jesus and that's not to, uh, you know, deploy any disrespect. It's just what I've observed. And my mom insists that my grandmom did say growing up, you know, Jesus is our savior and all those things. So I am really comforted by knowing that she is with the Lord now. Mm -hmm. But when I was growing up, I was in Catholic school on and off. And as we were talking about before we started recording, you know, I had questions. They didn't always answer them for me. They didn't like when we asked questions. They just kind of wanted to teach the curriculum and, and get through the day sort of thing. So I was kind of off-putting for me to not be able to engage in dialogue because I am too, as you said before we start recording, I'm very inquisitive. I love I love questions. I love logic. I love rationality. It's why oh, I started yeah. to get into <laughs> apologetics recently. Yeah. Um, and I love that Christianity just genuinely makes sense. Like it, it, it makes me so happy and excited. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Greg Kokel writes about this. Uh, it's one of my favorite books. It's back here somewhere. It's called The Story of Reality. And the way that he puts it is... Christianity is the best way to explain why things are the way they are. And totally yeah, agree. yeah, go back to that for a second. So you were in school and we talked about this before we got on a little bit was your your inquisitive nature. You're in Catholic school, you know, Christian school. And uh tell me what a what kind of questions you would have and b uh they would push back, but what would be uh the the general attitude to questions i remember in it was fourth third or fourth grade or second grade rather yeah second grade because in third and fourth i went to public i had i had a very strange upbringing i went to so many different schools but uh, that's kind of a moot point mm -hmm. in second grade i remember it was around easter and i had a lot of questions surrounding the resurrection because i, I wanted to believe it but it didn't make sense to me and they just said, you know, well, it just kind of is what it is. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't really, you know, I didn't know that there were 500 eyewitnesses, you know, things like that, that kind of really would have helped me wrap my mind around it. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, I'm in second grade. So it's it's strange for me at all to be asking for logistics, but I wanted them. Mm -hmm. um, now, this same Catholic school, after I had gone to public school, I actually went back to the same Catholic school in the seventh grade. And this is kind of where I would say walls really started to go up for me that I didn't 
really recognize until recently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they always say hindsight's 2020, but I was bullied incessantly my whole life, no matter what school I was in, no matter what grade I was in from literally kindergarten until 12th grade bullied all the time, Mm. not looking for a pity party just is what it is. But in seventh grade, it was the worst of it all because I was getting just to lay it out really briefly. I was getting death threats from this kid who he started by telling me he wished I was in the Virginia tech shooting. And then he would put death threats in my desk, you know, typed up and all capital letters, words I had never heard of because I was in the seventh grade, all these curse words and really nasty things saying, I hope you die. You're a fat B, you know, you're a fat C, like all these really mean, nasty things. Did the school do anything or your parents or? (laughs) Well, my mom and my grandma were beside themselves. (laughs) Yeah. Um, they, they even got the police involved, but here's, here's, you know, the roundabout thing that happened with that situation. I, I don't think I've ever really shared this publicly yet, but I, um, I was not a part of, because I had moved around so so much, I wasn't necessarily a part of that niche community. So this kid was like, he grew up in the school. He didn't move back and forth like I did. He grew up there. He had a foundation. They loved him. The administration loved him. Our teacher's brother was his soccer coach. You know, it was just, he was like a little, he was a little precious gem that couldn't be touched. And so mm-hmm. the school just decided that because I didn't want to go to school, I was terrified out of my mind. So my mom kept me home a couple days and I didn't get any notes in my desk in those few days. So what the school decided was that I was leaving them in my own desk for attention. So they literally locked me in a room with a priest, seventh grade, I'm 12 or 13, locked me in a room with a priest to get me to confess. Obviously I have nothing to confess to. I'm scared out of my mind. The priest is telling me I'm a liar and God knows I'm a liar. (laughs) So very impressionable age to have someone say that to you. Um, so I think I didn't even realize it, but like I said, it was a recent kind of discovery when I was thinking about my life in in hindsight, how walls I'm sure just went up, you know, like yeah. this is, this is the God that I've been taught loves me and wants me and, you know, whatever by safe to say, I never went to church after that. Um, yeah. Like a church hurt situation. Right. Yeah. So now kind of moving through high school, Mm -hmm. same, same deal with my grandparents. I'm very close with my grandma. We would always go out to dinner Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in public school throughout high school, bullied there as well. I didn't really have any sort of faith. I didn't care about it. My idol was music. That was my God. Hmm. I put all of my hope and uh, trust and uh, emotion into the bands that I was listening to. I used to say this one band all time low saved my life their lyrics, the lead singer. I, when I met them, I cried to them and I told them they saved my, like, it was, I was very, very dependent on music because I was very suicidal, you know, Mm -hmm. from being bullied my whole life and just being an only child, feeling very isolated and lonely. It just, it just had depression in me. And obviously I didn't have Jesus growing up. Um, so I didn't have any, any, again, I didn't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. So as my life progressed. I just got more and more depressed and music really was, was my, my idol for years, for years and years and years. Um, so that was my faith at the time. Now moving into young adulthood, I went in 2014, we went on, um, a cruise, my mom and I, and my stepfather, and this was just supposed to be a family trip to Bermuda. And while we were on the boat, in the middle of the Atlantic ocean, my grandma was suddenly rushed to the hospital and she, she had sepsis and the doctors didn't do the MRI that they needed to do to catch it in time. And her intestines ruptured and she, she just died. Mm. Um, and I was just in the middle of the ocean and everyone else got to be there. You know, my, my aunt and my grandpa, everyone was there. Mm -hmm. And my grandpa calls us, you know, he's keeping us updated. And I remember this is the first time where I I feel like I really tried to intentionally communicate with, quote, spirit, if you will. I went on the balcony of the cruise ship before we got the final call. And I was staring at the ocean and I was willing her to stay alive. I was saying out loud, Grandma, you can't do this to me. Not like this. I need to be there. I need to get married. I need to be able to buy you dinner on Tuesday night at least once, you know, like I need to be able to take care of you. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. 
I come back inside, my grandpa calls and he says to my mom, he says, Jeannie, it's over. Oh. And I let out, uh, a, I can still hear it, a blood curdling scream. And I grabbed the curtains of the, of the, the window and I just, I just dropped and I pulled them down with me. I just collapsed. That was, mm. that was like, it was like the sun had fallen out of the sky. Like it was, it was absolutely devastating for me because she was my everything. She was my best friend in the whole world. I loved her more than life itself. Mm. Um, Oh, Angela, I'm so sorry. I can tell a couple. Yeah, yeah it's, I wasn't expecting to get emotional because oh, I can no, I can funny. talk about it sometimes no, thank, and kind of make being, it through. But yeah, thank you for being so vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that. It's it's tough, especially whenever it's you know, and on grief is weird. You yeah, know, and yeah, and it's perfectly fine. And I and thank you, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. And thank you. For I felt that. Me. I felt that with you. So yeah, yeah I'm so sorry um, that happened. Well, you know, it's, it's God's plan. And, you know, I, I've, I've made a lot of peace with it because I see now that he let that happen. Um, he knew that I would go down a rabbit hole <laughs> that would ultimately lead me to him. And I'll talk about that toward the end when I kind of came to that realization and what that means. But yeah. I was just, I was devastated. I mean, it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. I was 20 years old and I was on top of that, very overweight, already depressed and anxious. I was on mm. antidepressants. Mm. I mean, my life was just felt like it was falling apart. Like it was totally void of meaning or purpose. I was mad at God. I didn't really, whatever idea I had of God, I was just mad at him. I used to, I'm a writer. So I would write about how, uh, you know, this doesn't happen to good people. Like this is a nightmare. I'm, I can't wait to wake up from this nightmare because God doesn't do this to good people. God doesn't do this to, to, to women like my grandma or kids like me, you know, I was really mad. Um, and that was sort of the catalyst for everything uh, because I was so severely traumatized and I was desperate to just reconnect with her. And so we sought out a medium, my mom and I, mm, Yeah, and that was just the beginning of the end. I mean, the medium, she actually identified as a Christian Mm -hmm. And she was saying that God was in the room and was calling on the archangels, which, you know, obviously now I know is not a biblical thing to be doing. Yeah. The medium. So do you find that there is a correlation between people who get sucked into this stuff because of trauma or because they've lost somebody they love and they are so desperate to connect with them again, that they seek out a medium or they seek out some sort of spiritual guidance just to have them in their life again, somehow, some way. Do you think that plays a really big part in some of this? 100%. Satan yeah. capitalizes on trauma for the yeah. spiritually asleep. Both of us, you and I, mm -hmm. we lacked that nuclear family unit, that biblical nuclear family unit. And that's no, it's no coincidence that we thus grew up a little broken because God God has an order. And when you're out of that order, when you're born out of that order, there's going to be consequences inevitably. And I just, I see that so clearly, especially because my best friend, Alyssa, we've known each other since we were three years old. She's been a devout Christian her entire life, has a wonderful family, mom, dad, brother, you know, it's a very typical white picket fence kind of family, but she's always been solid our whole lives. And now we're the same age and she has everything I want. Mm. And I really genuinely attribute it to her Christian upbringing because she's married now. She's trying for a baby. Yeah. She's a stay at home. Well, she's, she will be a stay at home mom. She's a stay at home wife. She's a stay at home bird mom. I'll say that she has birds, <laughs> <laughs> but her husband is, is, a, is an incredible God fearing man. It's just, it's everything that I now desire that I never knew I wanted because I had spiritual blinders on my whole life mm. because, and it started with that broken family and it started with that trauma. So yeah, I 100% have noticed with all the people that I interview for my podcast as well, there is always some sort of brokenness, pain, devastation that leads people into the counterfeit spirituality that you and I were sucked into as well. When you don't understand the truth of the gospel, you can't understand the truth mm -hmm. of life. So you're going to go seek out whatever truth kind of means to you 
based on whatever parameter of feeling that you have that day. Yeah. That makes so much sense to me. And I want, you know, my viewers watching and listening to, uh, to know that you understand that pain. And that's oh, yeah. one of the reasons that was a very big reason I'm sure that fueled it. And yet here you are knowing that you love and miss your grandma dearly, but you still know that, you know, there's a truth about this reality, about the spiritual reality. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's pick up where we left off. You went to the medium. She called on the archangels. What happened? She knew things she had no business knowing about me, my mom, my uncle that had committed suicide. Um, and that's when I got all these ideas in my head about purgatory as well mm. that aren't true. Um, she knew things about my upbringing, my mom's upbringing, dreams my mom used to have when she was little, stuff about my grandma. Like I had on the star necklace that my grandma gave me underneath my turtleneck. And she said, your grandma keeps putting a big star above your head. Like she just knew things she had no business knowing. And I was sold. And the medium let us take the card that we pulled home. And I just had that card for years. It was just hung up on my wall. What I did from there forward was purchase that same deck of cards so that I could talk to grandma, so that I could let my mom talk to her or my aunt or whoever needed to communicate with her. And um, I mean, it breaks my heart to think that I was bringing my family into this stuff. And I mean, it, it gets worse with how many people I brought into it, but more on that in a moment. I went to go get books about mediumship because I wanted to do what she was doing. I wanted my grandma to just come up next to me and talk to me the way that she was talking to that woman. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to read about psychic mediumship and tapping into your intuition and things like that. And that just kind of led me to crystals. Um, I went to this really new agey shop and I was looking at a bunch of different stones. And I remember feeling like my grandma was over my shoulder and told me that one, like, that's the one that we're going to be able to talk through. And um, I just started collecting a mass amount of crystals and using them for, you know, what they quote unquote are for, you know, like, oh, your obsidian's for grounding and your selenite is for clearing all, all the things that are bogus. Um, I got really obsessed with crystals and started collecting them for years. I had, I had a massive collection, which I eventually disposed of thousands of dollars just gone, but that's totally fine because it's, <laughs> I got, you know, I got an eternal life in exchange for that. So I, uh, from the crystals, I got curious about just the whole concept of energy because with the crystals, I was being taught that they contain energy for these specific things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to learn more about energy. That kind of just led me to Reiki and the chakra system, which just inevitably led me to yoga. You know, all these things are inter interconnected. And now with yoga, I, like I mentioned before, was very overweight when my grandmom died. And when she died, it got worse. You know, I was... I was just miserable. I would not get out of bed. I I wouldn't eat. And if I did eat, it was pizza, macaroni and cheese. I would be stoned out of my mind. So that would make me binge eat more. You know, it was just, it was a mess. It got to the point where I'm 21 years old and I couldn't walk up a flight of steps. If anyone's ever been overweight, they can relate to this feeling when you're walking next to someone and you're like walking uphill or something and you're trying to hold your breath so that they can't hear you panting. Like that was me and I'm 21. And I realized I'm literally on the same path that ultimately led my grandma to to die because she was she was like 70 something. It was too young and it was it was her unhealthy habits that led her to the hospital that day ultimately and I was like, "Wow, I'm killing myself. <laughs> I'm 21 and my diet is like McDonald's, like closet eating McDonald's and so I kind of tried to take control of my health the year after she died. And I was really good with dates. It was June 18th of 2015, where I started my lifestyle journey. And a year from that point, I had lost over a hundred pounds. I was exercising diligently. I was learning all about food. I had developed a really nice relationship with food then that kind of got convoluted over the years, but I, I just fell in love with, with being well. Um, now I was still really depressed, which kind of didn't make sense to me because I thought if my 
but if I saw my body change and, and I looked good and I felt good, then I should be mentally better too. And it kind of didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it would happen in bouts, but it was mostly because I was getting a lot of my happiness from the affirmation people were giving me for my weight loss. Um, so yoga was kind of like a complimentary supplement of my weight loss because I had lost the significant amount of weight and I was just curious about different fitness techniques. So when I was learning about chakras and all those things and saw that yoga was a part of it, I thought, wow, this can be a spiritual and physical practice for me. This seems perfect. I started to do yoga with Adrian on YouTube and I fell in love with it and just that was a, again, sliding board. I ended up becoming a yoga teacher years later. Mm. Um, I taught it on YouTube as well. Uh, didn't ever pick up the way I hoped it did, but that was, um, that was God protecting me and the viewers, but I was teaching at a local studio for over a year and I had a great following. Everyone loved me, said I was one of the best teachers. I was very intuitive and they, you know, all these things, but anyway, the yoga, ultimately just got me deeper into those in because you know the yogi the yogi mindset and um the things that ultimately accompany yoga that you can't get rid of i don't care how many people say that you can be a christian that does yoga you can't because yoga is not a physical practice with spiritual benefits it's a spiritual practice with physical benefits you just cannot eliminate that truth you can't no matter how good your intentions are that saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> it's true. Um, now I was starting to get really into like kind of Buddhist ideas because of yoga, Hinduism, because of yoga, um, not never really labeling it as those things, but those same, that same mindset, you know, oneness and yeah. you know, just pantheistic views, um, Gnostic views. I was just, I started to come to this idea of God as the universe yep. as source. I'm sure you're familiar with all these terms, you know, capital as just S. <laughs> yes, capital S source. Yeah. I would never say God. It was always source. It was always the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, the universe is giving me this, that, and then, you know, it kind of led into manifestation because if I, if I'm part of source, if I'm ultimately a fraction of source, then I can manifest from source. So it just, that started the manifestation thing, the law of attraction thing for me. And you know, I'm starting to do all these things, getting into all these practices, and yet I'm still sad. You know, I'm, I lost all this weight. Yeah. I'm still sad. I'm doing all this stuff. It's been two years at this point since grandma died. Um, so I'm up one night on Google, can't sleep. I look up, why do I feel so alone? Why do I feel so sad? I find this stuff called star seeds, all this stuff about star seeds. Yeah. Um, so what a star seed is for those that have never heard that term allegedly okay. is a being that comes from another star system such as Orion or Pleiades um or Andromeda or whatever you're wherever in the galaxies or in the universe come from another star system that is again allegedly a higher dimension than the frequency of earth And those beings come to earth to help ascend the collective, to help kind of save humanity, because the idea is that earth is stuck in the 3D and that these beings need to come in to help raise the vibration of the planet and thus save the planet by bringing it into 5D. Now, reflecting on that, it's literally counterfeit gospel. It's, (laughs) and it sounds exhausting. It is. I'm, I mean, it's exhausting, but it, it's the savior complex. It's like, oh, I came here from another planet to help save humanity. Yeah. And, you know, we all know who who's the one that saved humanity. It made me feel special. Special. It yeah. made me feel like my life wasn't a waste. It made me feel like I was actually here for a reason for the first time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, because growing up so isolated, bullied, and just misunderstood this was the first thing that said, yeah, it's on purpose. It's because you're actually not from the planet. Like you yes. don't belong here. You're and I was like, wow. Yep. Yeah. It, wow. it made so much sense to me. I just, I ate it up. I'm, I'm up for three hours reading about star seeds and came to the conclusion that I was a, Ple- a Pleiadian. 
based on my physical attributes and things like that. Um, so it's, you know, n- now we're at the point where I'm identifying as an alien. So the mental illness is just rampant at this point. <laughs> That's very interesting that you put it that way. Cause I think that I, I don't think it's a mistake that you and I have the same exact type of understanding. I know exactly what you mean, right? Like the, everything that you're saying, I'm jiving with, I understand it. And I think it's interesting that people can relate to that so much on why they got into the new age or any aspect or element in it and people that tinker in it even, right? Even Christians that don't know that it's, it's new age. It is because of that same concept, that savior complex where Mm -hmm. you want to be special. Christians fall for this too. Um, And so I think that that's, if you see the parallels, uh, it's uncanny. And now the starseed stuff. So pick up where you, you left off with that. Tell me a little bit more about that time in your life. It was, um, it became my, my latest obsession. I, I, you know, I've always been into like moon and stars, like thinking that the, the planets are cool and all these things, but that made me obsessed with space, Mm -hmm. um, which led me to astrology. You see how all this stuff is just like a domino effect. One thing after the other, you know, just constantly grasping at all of these things to fill the chasm in my heart. (laughs) Um, but the starseed thing was, like I said, it was an affirmation that I was here for a reason, that my life was not meaningless. It made me feel special. It made me feel like I actually, because the whole thing with the starseed gospel is that you chose to be here. It's not that you were sent here. It's that you actually made the conscious choice to be here. You signed a soul contract to come into earth, that you chose your family, you chose your region, you, you know, you chose your timeline and your life and your relationships and your path and the the lessons that you would have to learn as a part of your karmic soul journey and all the things. So again, again, these yogi concepts. Um, is that how you would make sense of pain? Like, is that ha- what helped you make sense? Absolutely. Of okay. Absolutely. It was 100% that okay. I chose it. Now this ties into my astrology which was the nail in the coffin and became the thing that i was my identity i was the astrology girl i was obsessed with astrology Hmm. so i started to get into astrology and the moon cycles and you know always setting intentions with the new moon and releasing at the full moon i started to have moon circles after i went to one i started to host my own and i had a group of new age friends that we would all do it together you know we would set up a little crystal grid a little tarot circle with all of our crystals in the middle and all of our candles in the middle we would sit around it on our pillows and we would call in our angels we would set up pillars of light all the things and in correlation to the themes of the moon which i was always responsible for gathering the information for because i was obsessed with it you know if the full moon is in leo that means something about our you know we have to release our pride you know things like that so then we would talk about areas of our lives where pride was blocking us from the intentions that we set at the previous new moon sort of thing um so it was it was always this constant seeking and um yeah it was it was me trying to to have answers ultimately and to feel special and to feel purposeful and to feel like my pain was validated and not just void or something that was ultimately inescapable like i like maybe there was a way out sort of thing because as i started to dive into my birth chart you know i just want to answer is why am i the way that i am because again i'm doing all this stuff for years and years and years at this point and nothing's really getting better like things are i i would get these like temporary highs because i you know i was always like a spiritual narcotic so it gives you these highs where you're like wow i'm evolving things are progressing and then you crash and burn worse than before yeah it's like oh great um so astrology was where I went to figure out why that was. Why do I keep going through the same patterns? Now, the paradox of that is that it led me through more patterns, but I um, I started to find what I thought were the answers in my birth chart. Oh, my Venus is in Cancer. So because Cancer is like the very emotional sign and Venus is the planet of of um of your, of your, of love and all these things. Like, that's why I'm so emotional. That's why I'm emotional an emotional garbage can all the time, just like crying my eyes out and can't get my stuff together. And then I remember that was what I always attributed to 
why I'm so reactionary and things like that. So it just started to kind of fill in blanks for me, astrology of why I am the way that I am. It gave me answers for those things, which are not answers. They were excuses. Yeah. I was was just going to ask you, like, do you think that that was like, think of the implication to that where it's like, I am the way I am because of something else. I have no control over it. Do you think that it takes the responsibility off of your actions? 100%. Ultimately, my belief was that we had to um, heal these broken parts of ourselves in order to come back to source. And that was, you know, when I, when I talk about this stuff, it doesn't even make sense, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. My audience knows I was never into any of that stuff. Some of it, I'm still learning about some of the things that people were into in the new age. And uh, it's very interesting how it's all... It's the same core though, right? So like you have like this big circle, like this polar is opposite from this polar of belief, but the core belief is still the same. And somehow it makes you your own savior. You are your own sovereign somehow. And this is the definition of who you are. You're running with this. This is everything about your life. What happens from there? So um, this was my astrology phase was... I want to say f- started around 24 and was at its peak in when I was like 26 and 27, right before I got saved. All these things ultimately were just kind of affirming my pain, um, affirming that it was the progress. It was the process, you know, it's all the process, you know, the, the astrology made sense of that because of the themes that were correlating. So it was like, oh, I might just be having a really bad month because mercury is in retrograde and i just got to work through this right now or oh i might be having a really depressive episode because the moon is in scorpio you know it was always like there was a reason for it that i could just justify and use that as means to cope with whatever i was going through never actually make it better but at least kind of just the image of just me just holding my head above water i'm drowning and like my the water's up to my chin and i'm just you know all that's exposed is my mouth like that was that was astrology it was just keeping my head above water best i could Mm. but just like finding at the end of the day like but i got this you know it's like very self-help ultimately and i mean the self-help thing is just i didn't even touch on that but i got into self-help because i was a part of like an mlm and that's like what all they talked about so (laughs) <laughs> self-help is like an entirely different can of worms but it yeah it correlates to new ageism 100 yes it does um but i was just sad i was sad from the time i was a kid to a teenager to a young adult and found all these different coping mechanisms it just never it was just always like band-aids over a gunshot wound it was just hmm. never healing um when i was in high school i went through many suicidal episodes i actually in college was in a psychiatric hospital for a brief period of time inpatient and outpatient um like i said i was on antidepressants because i i wanted to kill myself a lot and i and i used to self-harm in high school and sometimes in college and so you know here we are fast forward to me 27 years old 26 and 27 years old and I still feel the way I did when I was 15. And that just, it was such a hopeless feeling. It was just crushing because I remember being a teenager thinking it can't be like this forever. You know, it's going to, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. And that's what people would tell me, you know, you're just going through, you know, the growing pains of youth and all these things and wait until you're older, wait until you're in your 20 and all these things. And, and I'm just sitting there, you know, I remember one day, I went down to this little stream that I have nearby and I'm sitting there writing in my journal about how I'm just crushed. Like my, I, like, I don't understand why I still want to die and how I can be doing all, all this work all the time, like Mm -hmm. every single day, Reiki sessions, crystal healing, yoga, paying attention as closely as I can to what's going on with the astrological signs and the, and the um, planets and the sun and the moon and following that religiously so that I could get better Mm -hmm. and just not knowing why it wouldn't get better. Um, And like I said, temporary highs, but extraordinary lows that would follow. Mm. And so 
I got to a point where, you know, I actually self-harmed self -harmed again when I was 27. Wow. And I hadn't done that in years. And it was just, you know, I, I tell people, I, I tell people that even before I came to know Christ, I told people it felt like I was possessed or something. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. like, it, like I didn't know why I did that. And I remember waking up the next day, like, what did I just do? Why, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And my new age friends, I went to one of my new age friends um, about it. And she actually told me that it was my higher self trying to reach me. Like that was the advice that she offered me. Wow. Like who needs enemies when you have friends with that kind of advice? Seriously. I, well, and that's, you know, that, that is the consistent, that's the logic that flows from that worldview. Exactly. You have to, yeah, you have to have some sort of explanation like that. Because your suffering is your own fault. Exactly. Oh, yes, exactly. And yep. so it's the, it falls short. And then that's probably why you're still going through this, yep. this cycle of self-hatred. You know, I'm sitting there recording an episode in front of the same camera for my old podcast, talking about healing the self while I have fresh cuts on my leg. It just, who was I to be talking about healing? You're at this point. And you have all these beliefs. What's the turning point? What was it that brought you to to Jesus? It's so faceted. So in the background of all of this, I have this friend that I mentioned before, Alyssa, who grew yeah. up Christian. She and I were just inseparable growing up like sisters. We were just closer than you can imagine. And as we got older, like, you know, the differences of our upbringings started to get more evident in the things that we were interested in. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be more reckless. I wanted to watch scary movies all the time when we would have sleepovers. She really didn't want to, but she did anyway, kind of thing. And, um, you know, I wanted to go walk on the train tracks at 10 o'clock at night when we're in the seventh grade and she didn't want to do, you know, things like that. And, yeah. um, got worse when we were kind of teenagers and then college, forget it. Like I was kind of hooked on cheap thrills. I, I got involved with this guy that just would bring me into really dangerous situations that where they were fun. We, we would go to abandoned places where, you know, there's homeless people that could have hurt us and things like that, you know, in, in the dead of night. Um, he walked me across a bridge and told me that the train wasn't running. When we got to the other side, a train goes by. Like, and if we were on the bridge, we would have gotten hit by it. Like, it was either get hit by the train or jump. Like I was, I was kind of sucked into this kind of world now where I'm just like chasing cheap thrills. I actually got us in a situation, me and her, where we were with a group of friends, but we got in trouble with the cops because we were exploring an abandoned amusement park. Like this is the kind of influence I was on her. And she stayed for some reason. She just loved me all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, as I got older and got into the new ageism, um, we really started to drift. I would tell people that if I had met her now, we wouldn't be friends. That the only reason we were friends is because of our history, yeah. because we were so different. Because she has these closed-minded beliefs because she's a Christian. She's judgmental. She doesn't get it. She doesn't get openness and <laughs> and expansion and it's all these things. Inclusive and right. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the background, she had been praying for me this whole time for years, like decades, just mm. praying for me that I would come to know the Lord. So that's happening in the background all these years. So it's like mm. an important facet. Now, for my own self, this happened honestly this time last year. So September of 2021, I was, I was at like a low, a, a low of lows where I'm I'm involved with someone and yet I'm really interested in people that I work with, like married men that I work with, letting married men flirt with me and say really inappropriate things to me and tempt me into sexual situations that luckily I never got into, but you know, it was still wrong, extremely wrong. Um, I was, I was just addicted to attention from men. And that was kind of like a problem for years. Even when I had a partner, I'm at this low of lows where, you know, I'm half involved with like a married guy at work. I'm miserable all the time. I'm obsessed with the moon and stars thinking that's going to solve my problem somehow. I'm stagnant in life. Like, I, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Like I'm not, I'm not like, what am I doing kind of thing? You know, like having like an existential crisis. So it gets to a point in September of 2021 where I really wanted to die like again, badly. 
Um, this was the same year I had relapsed with self-harm back in March. So from March to September, nothing was getting better. Just kind of, again, this temporary high. So mm-hmm. I had this episode where I was I'm just home and I'm thinking about it. Like, I'm thinking like, I should just kill myself. Like, what's the point? Nothing's changing. Nothing's ever going to change. Like, I, I can't imagine doing this another 10 years, you know, I've already been doing it 10 years, like since I was 15, 16, 17, feeling miserable, and like I want to die. What the heck is going to happen to me when I'm 37 years old, mm-hmm. and still feel this way? Like, I can't do it. Mm. Um, And I was actually thinking, like, I understand why my uncle did what he did. And I didn't want to end up like him where he was like 50 something. And just just ended his life because nothing changed. Like, I didn't want to get to that point. So I figured, let's just do it now. Mm. And I'm crying in my kitchen and I just like, I just collapse to the floor. I curl up in a ball on my kitchen floor, just weeping like inconsolably. And it was the first time in my life. And I don't know why I knew to do this, how I knew to do this. I don't know where it came from. I just called to Jesus for the first time in my life. I said, Jesus, save me. And that everything just started to change from there. And it wasn't a, it wasn't like an overnight thing because um, my full salvation really, I don't really consider it to have been met until December of 2021 um, because things did start to change. Like Jesus came into my life, you know, obviously he's knocking the whole time and that was it. He just needed to hear me say, save me. And he was like, okay, comes in the door. So things that start to change. I noticed that my, uh, my interest in this married guy, kind of like the walls go up and I'm like, I don't really want any parts of you anymore. Please get away from me. Mm-hmm. I actually did end up quitting that job because of that. Um, a few months after my, my salvation, because the temptation of the flesh, I started to feel less anxious. Like those, those, anyone that has ever had anxiety knows how that just that nonstop jabber in your brain just like constantly talking at you like it just cleared Hmm. before i even knew the bible verse that you know god does not give us a spirit of fear but of a sound mind yeah i was using the word sound that as to describe how i started to feel since i called out to jesus i'd say to people i feel more sound like thing i just don't feel i don't feel hopeless anymore um now from there I started to get randomly just on my on my Instagram feed, these things would pop up. People I didn't follow, they would just be like suggestions of yoga is demonic. And I'd be like, like look at look at it and read it. And it would trigger me, obviously. But something that I've I've always really believed in, even as a new ager, is that lean into your triggers. You know, it's there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, be willing to be wrong. So I was I couldn't, I knew just based on my own philosophies, I couldn't, I couldn't write it off. So of course, you know, the algorithm, more types of those things start to come onto my feed. So I start to just follow these people and just allow myself to absorb the information that I'm seeing that tarot cards are evil. Crystals are not healing mechanisms. In fact, when you try to use them as such, you invite in spirits that have no business being near you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, the astrology stuff. Now, <laughs> when I would see the astrology stuff, it would just be like swipe, swipe. Like I didn't, I didn't want to see. You weren't that. ready. I, I wasn't ready. <laughs> no, I, I could, I could read the other stuff, but astrology, no, 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 not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just started to take it in, and I remember I would start to talk to people about it. And um, well, I decided I wanted to read the Bible, and <laughs> it's just so funny how that happens. I, I would say, I'll, I really want the Bible. I, I I just need to get my hands on a Bible. Did you, so you cried out to Jesus and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I want to know more, 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 more. Yeah. I got, I got really hungry really yeah. fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel the that. second, because like the, I feel like the second you feel that love even a little bit, which I did, mm-hmm. you're like, wow, I want more. I want more. Not, not in the crazy addictive way that it is with new ageism. Yeah, I know. But it, it was like, it was like that actually feels like a cozy hug. Yes. And that's like, I just want to fall into the, the arms of whatever this is sort of that thing. Was, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Yes. And my friend, um, she lives in New Hampshire now, Alyssa, mm-hmm. but she um, was visiting 
down here. I forget for what reason, but. And where are you again? We're in Pennsylvania. Well, I'm in Pennsylvania. You're in Pennsylvania. Okay. So she was here and she said, why don't you come to church with me? I, I, I somehow stumbled upon information about the book of Enoch and I was talking to Alyssa about it and she was starting to get I could like a little excited. She tells me now, you know, like I could tell that you were starting to get like these ideas about God with the context of your new age backdrop. And I just, it was a really good opportunity for me to plant seeds and kind of just lead you to scripture, lead you to scripture. Because I would say, I would say, you know, I would use new age terminology, but use it alongside Jesus, that Jesus was like, you know, Jesus was actually a light worker. Like he came here just like a star seed kind of thing. And then Alyssa would kind of counter it with, this is what the gospels of John says. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted a Bible because of that, um, because mm-hmm. I wanted to, the truth, I wanted to, I wanted to really know what was going on in this world and why mm-hmm. um, on top of me feeling that cozy hug from Jesus for the first time. So uh, it's layered again. Um, So I go to church with Alyssa, which I'm sure she was so excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Her dream come true. Now church was really cool for me. My first experience there because it was very different from what I had remembered as a kid in Catholic school where I bet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like the stained glass windows and the statues of Mary, which are idols and shouldn't be there. Neil stand, Neil stand. Uh, Neil. Yes. Kneeling. Um, the, the extravagant image, all the things. It's just like this casual church. It's pretty, mm-hmm. but it's very casual and the seats are comfy, <laughs> you know, um, the pastor, he's dressed in just normal clothes, like just a button up shirt and khakis. And he's up there and they were in the book of revelation. And he's up there and he's like talking about the current events that and saying things that I'm like, I'm like my jaws on the floor. Like I've never heard a quote religious leader talk like this. Mm. Like he's talking about, about like the deception of the world and, and how all these things are happening because the world is under the, the, the spiritual oppression, you know, from the fall ultimately, and, and just tying it all into what's going on with the virus and with the uh, uh, division of the parties and all of the things that just I had been studying for the last two years. And I'm just like, again, my jaws on the floor. I'm like, whoa, like, this is cool. Like, it's actually cool. And it was the first time I heard scripture in relation to the world. And so I took it upon myself to go back to that church on my own. When she had gone back home to her new place in New Hampshire with her husband, I, um, I went back and it's funny because I sit in the front now, but I used to sit in the very back row. Um, so I'm sitting in the back and he's talking about, um, uh, towards the end about just, if it felt like he was talking to me, he even said at one point in one of the sermons, um, like towards while I was still like straddling the fence of new ageism, he said in one of the sermons about like, you know, we don't need this. We don't need that. And then, and then he even said, we don't need the moon to tell us what to do. And I was like, what? <laughs> it, but you know he started saying in this one particular service that i was at how you know if you don't want to do it alone if you just feel empty if you have this gaping gaping hole inside if you've tried everything if if you just if you're just you're just tired and you're weak and you're weary there is there is a, a savior that stretched out his arms on a wooden cross for you and bled for you and loves you and will redeem you and I felt like he was just talking to me. There's so many people in the church, but he was talking to me that day because the Holy Spirit was talking to me. And he did an altar call and I went up and um, everyone clapped for me and it was really nice. And uh, Pastor Joe, who I, I just adore, um, he asked who I was and um, I introduced myself. I told him like, I'm into, I'm very spiritual. You know, we always used to say I'm very spiritual, but... Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about this Jesus stuff. Yeah. I, I told him very briefly. It's I'm I'm um, willing to learn because it it feels different, and I don't know why. But I, I if he can if he can help me, then I, then I will I will I will surrender. Um, but I don't really know what that looks like or what that means, um, because I'm very used to kind of like doing it on my own, and I'm just a mess. Like I'm not as poised as I am now. I was crying to him, and he held my hand and he asked if he could pray over me. And so he did that. Now, this is the first time I noticed that I didn't feel an ache in my chest. Now for context with that, every time we would do a moon circle Mm. or every time we would, I would meditate on my own. 
sometimes when I would do yoga, this would happen where I would just feel this cavern in my heart, like this cavern in my, in my chest that I, I, it just feels like, like bricks or pressure or something. Like it's hard to catch my breath sort of thing. And it was always when I was in those like prayer meditative kind of states. Um, and of course people would say, that's your heart chakra. You know, it's just opening or it needs to clear. We need to do Reiki. We need to cut cords, all these things. And never like, uh, Oh, it's an empty hole that Jesus needs to fill, you know? So I, um, I would always break down in our moon circles. I was always the one losing it. You know, some people would cry sometimes, but I was the one absolutely losing it. Every single moon circle, it became like, kind of like a little joke amongst our group. Like uh, here, like the, t- like, as soon as it was my turn, someone would slide a tissue box over before I even start, you know, like I was just a mess. And I would always feel that ache in my chat, in my heart. And it, it, sometimes I would leave our rituals feeling worse than when I went, because I would feel physical pain at that point. Like I, like I just couldn't catch my breath. I was just panicked. And so I noticed when pastor Joe was holding my hand and praying over me and my eyes were closed and I was in that kind of meditative state in the prayer with him that my chest felt full. And I realized this is like, it was, it was a tangible kind of like, this is definitely different sort of moment for me. Mm-hmm. And he gave me a Bible after I had been saying out loud all week, I really want a Bible. He just gave me one. He was like, here you go. And then funny enough, I come home and, uh, my partner's like, Hey, look what I found in my trunk. And he just pulls out a Bible. So in the same day I found two Bibles, like I, I had two bi- free Bibles. That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was just like, God's like, yes, here, here. Yes. Learn. <laughs> come, come <laughs> to me, please. <laughs> um, so I start reading the Bible and I had it in my head at the time. Again, this is still this time last year. This is all happening, which is so crazy mm. to think about. Um, so I start reading the Bible and I have it in my head. I'm going to read it front to back, which did not happen, but I'm very OCD. I thought, yes, I'm going to do it this way. I started at Genesis and just started taking notes. Deuteronomy started to have some very convicting things for me. Mm, I bet. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> it was all about sorcery and divination. Deuteronomy 18 through. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The mediums are talking to demons. And that was like, oh, was that a demon? Not my grandma. And so it was like, I was starting to come around to these kinds of things. And how did you feel about that? I, I was wondering about that. So if if you're you're in this truth quest, then a lot of people stop right there, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're like, I, I don't want to believe that wasn't my loved one. How did you deal with that realizing, oh, that wasn't my grandma? So I, since I, since she died and since I started to get into the new age spirituality, I was, um, I had an entity with me all the time mm. and, and I thought it was her. Oh. It, it was with me all the time. I, 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 it could touch me. It could change the temperature of my body. It talked to me sometimes, um, never like a voice, but in my, in my mind, it would speak back and it, I, I would call on it. I would invite it to me. I would ask it to hold me, which just like now, when I think about that, I'm like, what was it? Like, I wonder what it looked like. And I, I don't even yeah. think I want to know, um, it was with me all the time. It was with me at night in the car. I used to see um, her birth number. She was born in 1941. I used to see 41s all over the place. And I would use that as like a, you know, like an affirmation that I'm doing the right thing, so, sort of sort of thing. So I, um, I, it started to kind of fade when I, after the Jesus thing, because I, I wanted to, I wanted Jesus near me. So mm-hmm. I would ask Jesus to come near me. So naturally, whatever that thing was, what didn't want to be near me, but it would still come. It would still come. And I remember I'm in my kitchen and this is after I'm saved. So this is in like January of 2022. I'm in my kitchen doing the dishes and I feel it come up behind me. And I said out loud, I said, uh, I said, whatever this is. And I was talking to guys said, whatever this is, that is pretending to be my grandma i know it's not her god please take it and send it to hell where it belongs in the name of jesus christ like i was i was kind of yelling because i was i was mad that this thing had been fooling me for like seven years um and that i had had such an intimate relationship with it like it it honestly pissed me off i was i was mad um So I'm like, I'm like saying, God, like, take it, like in Jesus's name, get rid of it, get it out of my house, get it away from me, send it to hell and never let it out again. 
and I haven't felt it since. It's wow. just been gone since. So That's, that is so cool because you yeah. understood what that was and you didn't let it hinder truth. It didn't, mm-hmm. you didn't let that hinder following and giving up everything to follow Jesus. Right. Um, I'm glad I asked you about that. Thank you for sharing that. So pick up where you left off where, um, where I came in and asked you that. Yeah. Um, so after that moment with my pastor and I had all my, I had my Bibles and I'm reading and Deuteronomy starts to convict me and tell me things that I don't necessarily want to hear, but I was open to them. Good for you. Um, I just, I just kept going and just learning more and learning more. And, you know, I, I, I start to think to myself, well, maybe I really can do both. Okay. Okay. I can give up Reiki. Like there were things I was like, all right, fine. I can give that up. Like tarot. I was like, all right, you know what? The cards kind of freak me out all the time anyway, because I would always <laughs> pull things that would say like, you're going to go through some really bad stuff, but it's because you need to. So like, I was like, I can get, I can, I can deal with that. I can, I cannot do the cards anymore for you. I cannot do the crystals anymore. Like to God, I can do it for you. I don't need that stuff. You're it's taking fine. things off your spiritual shelf. Right. But the yoga and the astrology, I was like, I would think to myself, like, I can do, you know, if I start to read scripture before my yoga, if I start to pray while I'm doing yoga, if I start to talk about God while I teach yoga, then I'm going to, I'm going to kind of flip the script, you know, see, I'm still straddling the fence of new ageism because I still think I have power. I'm like, I can change the definitions of these things. You know, I have good intentions. But again, like I said, you know, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. So with astrology too, I'm starting to like find verses that fit my narrative. and like cherry picking, like, despite the fact that Isaiah 47 says astrologers are going to burn in the fire. I'm like, no, it says here that God made the suns and the seasons and the signs. So it's fine. I would just cherry pick verses that, you know, I would take them out of context entirely and kind of affirm to myself exactly. that astrology is okay. It, mold mm-hmm. it to fit to your um, desires. Mold yes. To, yeah. Instead of, yes. yeah. So you weren't ready to let that go. Yeah. I wasn't ready. Um, I was, I was okay with Jesus being in my life. I wanted that. I wanted the Holy spirit. I wanted the Bible, but I wanted astrology and yoga still too. So I believe it's in Kings where uh, the people you, they worshiped Yahweh along with other gods. Uh-huh. And it was a detestable in the sight of the Lord. That's what it reminds me of. Um, yeah. A lot of people do that. Yeah. It's that I'll take Jesus, but I also want this and this and this and this. Like they're yeah. not willing to give it up. That's what absolutely. It yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. I remember. So this is like late November, early December, where my. I'm just, I'm I'm wondering about astrology. I'm getting so many mixed things on Instagram about it. Like I'm finding people that are affirming what I wanted, but then I'm also finding people that are giving valid reasons why it's a no-no. And so I messaged um, someone who's now a brother in Christ and I asked him about it because he's just, he's someone I've followed for a really long time, um, even before I was saved. So I messaged him and I asked him about astrology and I said, listen, I love it. I'm getting to know God, but I do love, I do love astrology. And what if we can, what if astrology is like a tool that God gave us to, uh, to use, to help us understand our, his plan for us? Like, what if that's what he wants us to use it for? And I was trying to say like, it says this in the Bible and that in the Bible. And he's like, listen, and he's like, I know this is hard. I know you, I know it's, I know it's like really difficult to wrap your mind around and, and to, surrender to but and then he sent me deuteronomy 18 and then he sent me isaiah 47 and it was the first time i'd seen isaiah 47 hmm. and it, it 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 just it it what washed over me i mean it was the holy spirit it was conviction mm-hmm. and i was like it was the first time where i realized and it was just kind of gut-wrenching it was like a, a it was like a two by four to the head it was like oh no i can't it's not good this is what I actually, this is what God says about it hmm. in context, not me picking little things here and there. Like you got to look at scripture. I tell people this now when they try and make these arguments, I'm like scripture is not, it's not the verses and the chapters. It's one whole, like you have to look at what scripture says as a yeah, whole, as a narrative. Right. And so consistently throughout the Bible, God says no to astrology, just mm-hmm. consistently. Mm-hmm. And I realized it and I, and I was like, I have to give up my podcast. I have to stop 
I have to stop paying attention to this stuff. I don't, mm. how do I, how do I even begin? And I called Alyssa a couple days after that, crying my eyes out. And I was like, I'm, I'm just ready to give it to Jesus. And she, I was like, I, I'm going to stop doing astrology. I'm going to stop doing yoga. I'm going to stop it. All. I'm going to, I'm going to stop my podcast. I'm going to make my last episode and tell my audience I'm not doing this anymore. I was like, I don't know what's going on, Alyssa. I'm, I feel crazy. Like I really did. I felt crazy, but I knew it was right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did, I, I recorded my final episode of Mooning Back podcast in December of 2021. And I, and I, that's still up by the way, I have, I have left all of my old content up on my Instagram and on my YouTube channel. I know a lot of people are very quick to kind of erase that part of their lives because it, it was obvious deception to God. It was disobedience. So who wants any parts of that version of themselves? And I get that, but I felt like God when I prayed on it, it was just really this, oh, this feeling over and over, like, leave it, just leave it there. Let people see it. You know, don't let them just see it, but let them witness it, actually witness your transformation and see how great I am. So here you are years since high school. Um, you're in this really dark place basically for all these years. And then this happens. Can you contrast what it, that, it, that is so like here you were and then you did all these things you came to christ what can you tell us about the difference between your life experience since then since then mm-hmm. um <laughs> like you the know, depression the self yeah. like how and the, you know all these things that you were struggling with because typically it just it feels like that that void is filled you feel 100 percent. yeah it's like, peace so after I, I, I feel like I went into the world with like rose colored Jesus glasses on mm. where I was like, everything's great and perfect. And, and wow, I'm never going to be sad again. And that was, maybe I, like I call the that the honeymoon month. with God. The, yeah, the honeymoon exactly. With God phase is a real yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And that's what I, I always say, like the rose colored Jesus glasses. That's like my thing for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like, you know, something bad would happen or you start. And then I was like, start to feel a little, like get sad one day. And I'm like, what? I thought um, it was supposed to be sad at all. Right, right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the, I, this is, you know, I'm still very new to the Bible. I'm much, much more adept than I was then, of course, but I'm still new to it. So I started reading about, I started reading the Psalms. I started to read Job. I started to read about Elijah. And I was like, oh, actually, sadness is a pretty normal part of the Christian experience. Yes. Um, it's like, it's like, you don't just have the joy of the Lord. It's like you have the joy of the Lord streaked through Yes, the, the, the sadness kind of thing. But the thing is when I, when I experience sadness or anxiety or fear, because the Bible doesn't, you know, like where it says, cast your anxieties onto him. Mm -hmm. That means there are anxieties to be cast on. Like the Bible is pretty clear that Mm -hmm. we are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And that it's inevitable. But the thing is, the difference now is that it's not a hopeless suffering. Yeah. It's not It's not this empty, no light at the end of the tunnel suffering just to suffer. It's not just like, oh, I have to do it because it's my shadow work or my process or my astro- <laughs> astrological blueprint. It's like Romans 8.18. You know, it's that. It's the, the sufferings of this world can't compare to the glory. It's this knowing that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not, because Jesus is the king of kings and he loves me. I always kind of explain it to my girls. I homeschool and we do this theology, this systematic theology. And one of the things that I try to explain to them is that every human being on the face of the planet um, is created to worship. We are created to worship something and you're going to find something to worship, whether it's your identity or something to make you feel it's basically, it is your identity. Like who are you and mm-hmm. whatever you are using to create that identity. If it's not Jesus, um, you are going to find emptiness no matter where you go until, if, unless you have Jesus, um, you know, cause it's like a, it's, it's like this rabbit trail that people go down. You, you get this dead end and you're like, okay, I need something else dead end. Okay. I need something else. It's one serotonin fix to the next. And yeah. And it's all of a sudden (laughs) he's the end game. It's Mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, I get it now. Like everything, this is what people were talking about. 
Um, yeah. And that actually brings me to another thought. Uh, did you have any uh, hesitations with Jesus, the Bible or anything because of your misconceptions about Christianity or Christians? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. It, uh, you know, there are things that I feel like in this culture, kind of wrapping your mind around like homosexuality and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, took me a minute to understand that God knows better than I do. But I believe that now. And I know it's true. Um, the so I did, pressure is another thing. Right, right. And I had, and I had, so I did have some reservations, but I think that's very normal when it, when you never knew it and it's anything that's new is going to feel uncomfortable. So especially when it challenges what made you so cozy for so long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it was, uh, it was challenging at times, but I would, I would pray on it mm -hmm. and Honestly, the joy and the peace surpassed any trepidation that I had. I remember crying on the balcony. I was in North Carolina with someone and I, I was crying and I said, you think this is easy for me to admit that what I've done for the past almost decade is wrong? Do you really think it's easy for me to say that I have gone this far to just really not have come far at all? Like, do you really think this is easy? I'm like crying my eyes out, like saying like, yeah. this is, this is, this is earth shattering. Like, I have no idea what's going on right now, but Jesus is real. Like he just came into my life and he's changing everything. This isn't easy, but mm -hmm. it's what I need to do. I can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do in your life in the next few years. So this is the second time I've heard your story and if I could describe it, I think it's like reading a good book twice, <laughs> right? Where it's like every time you're reading it, you you feel different things. You find new things out about the character. And uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for coming on and talking with me, being so vulnerable. And I just know that my viewers are um, going to be eager to know where they can find out more about you and where they can follow you. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for having me. But people can find me on Instagram. I use Instagram above all other social media. So whenever that eventually blows up, sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, it's my full name, Angela Marie Yuchi. So A-N-G-E-L-A-M-A-R-I-E-U-C-C-I. Mm -hmm. And I have a podcast, Heaven and Healing Podcast. It's on YouTube, Apple, and, Spot and Spotify. Mm -hmm. So on any of those platforms, you're still going to see the old podcasts too. It's mm -hmm. broken up. You can pretty much see it. It's like, it's from the difference between 2021 and 2022 is my new podcast versus my old podcast. It's very clean and easy to see it differentiated that way. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just, if anyone's curious about my old stuff, like my last episode where I kind of denounced it all versus the 13 or 14 episodes of heaven and healing that I now have. And on Heaven and Healing, what I do is I share testimonies like mine, coming to Christ testimonies, not just from New Ageism, but from addiction and mm. just all different walks of life, whatever I can find really. And um, I talk about culturally relevant, politically relevant, socially relevant topics as it relates to scripture. So that's what it's all about. And again, you can find that on YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. Great. Thank you. Do you ever think at, at some point you might take them down? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just, at least, at least like for the first year of my sanctification, I feel like it's, it's just a really great, again, it, it's a witness yeah. to what he's done for me, but I will remove it. I, and I got asked that a lot. People are like, why is it still up? Aren't you worried you're going to lead people astray? But the thing is, first of all, it's God's sovereignty. It's not my job to make sure people, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Second of all, if anyone looks at my old stuff, if anyone's you know, like searching for tarot or or the new moon or whatever and they find it and they like it mm -hmm. they're gonna look at my stuff and guess what they're gonna see jesus they're yeah. gonna see a girl that went from saying all that stuff to saying what i say now so there's gonna be a seed planted either way yeah um but yeah it'll be removed absolutely yeah. at some point i'm sure somebody watching was thinking or hoping i'd ask that so that's why i asked that. yeah <laughs> yeah but i yeah, do get that a lot yeah i figured 
Um, but yeah, no, this was great. Thank you so much. I appreciate this, guys. All uh, everything that we talked about or relevant information, references, links to her podcast and where you can reach Angela will be in the description of this video. Guys, let me know what you thought about this. Uh, leave what you think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. And Angela, again, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It was great.